Hello, good morning. Well, uh, I want to talk to you about equality and the right to housing. Now, we all agree that the right of housing is an important right, it is a social, social right, but it has large uh, budgetary implications. Can it be enforced? Can it be enforced by the courts? Can the judgment be relevant to what will happen really? And what about uh, uh, other countries? Here in Israel, we have no uh, full-fledged constitution. We have some basic laws. The most important uh, basic uh, law on human rights is uh, basic law uh, on dignity and liberty. Doesn't mention uh, social rights. Uh, they didn't forget them. It doesn't mention because the parliament didn't or Knesset didn't want to mention them. So. What can, what can we do? I think, and I'll show you, that the we can rely on the principle of equality to do something that is enforceable. But let us begin at the beginning. First of all, is this social right recognized as a full-fledged right? Now, uh, the right to adequate housing uh, is uh, recognized under international law enunciated under Article 25.1 of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, the right of housing has been protected in Article 11 of the International Covenant of Economic and Social and Cultural Rights and other major international human rights treaties. Now, indeed, really, in reality, housing forms an indispensable part of ensuring human dignity. It encompasses more than a roof over one's head. Housing is essential for normal, healthy living. It fulfills deep-seated psychological needs for privacy and personal space, physical needs for security, and protection from inclement weather. Social needs for basic gathering points where important relationships are forged and nurtured. Well, we see it's a basic human right. So if it is a basic human rights, it is the state's obligation to guarantee that everyone can exercise this right to live in peace, security, and dignity. But what does this obligation mean? Now, state obligations do not mean that the state is required to build housing for the entire population, or, this, or that this right will manifest itself in the same manner in all places and in all times. What does it mean? Uh, A, that the state will endeavor by all appropriate means to ensure that everyone has access to affordable and acceptable housing. B, the state has to undertake a series of measures which indicate policy and legislative recognition of each constitutional aspects of the rise to housing. But coming back to the question I started this uh, resume, can courts enforce this? And more than that, does it make any difference if they try? Because uh, I remember a judgment of our court based on the principle of equality that uh, uh, invalidated a decision of the government to build this uh, housing by discrimination only to a certain segment of society and discriminate other segments. Well, we wrote a very beautiful judgment, but the houses were built and nothing happened. So it's a problem. It will remain a problem. You will continue to talk about it the whole day, but even relying on the principle of equality, I must be careful because it is not a simple matter. Now, therefore, for many years, the major international non-governmental organization, as well as the United Nations human rights system itself, focus on civil and political rights. It's much easier to give a judgment that, uh, of equal treatment between men and women, even this is not so simple. But uh, you mentioned uh, our judgment about the right of uh, uh, Alice Miller uh, to participate in a course for avi aviation and she wanted to be a pilot. Really, this judgment changed the whole life of the girls uh, in the army. 
and opened the army. And uh, I'm very proud, therefore, of this judgment that had an implication in real life. Here we are in much uh, harder uh, work to do. Well, let us continue. So sure enough, it was easy to focus on civil and political rights and ignoring social, ignoring social rights. The truth is that for a person who has no housing, has not enough food to eat, has no education, uh, good education for the children, and uh, uh, health, uh, help for his health, the civil rights all the uh, and the equality between men and women and gender equality, etc., etc., doesn't they don't interest these per uh, these persons because they want first of all to to live, to eat, to have a roof under their head, uh, coming back to housing. Now these social rights were relegated years, even in our court also, to secondary status, both in the international law and sure in the material laws of many countries. I believe that the situation didn't change dramatically, but in theory at least, the interdependence nowadays and the indivisibly, oh, it's a hard word for me, indivisibly oh, of the different <laughs> kinds of rights has gained wide recognition. It's no problem theoretically recognizing the, let us say, right to housing. And there is, uh, uh, when I read articles, widespread understanding that social rights are as important as civil rights, as I say, even more important. They are the basis for the life itself. But many, Nevertheless, many maintain that binding legal norms should not be set with respect to allocation of state resources, such as education, health, and housing, as these are economic policy issues that should not and could not be decided by the judiciary. Indeed, coming back to international law, while the Universal Declaration of Human Rights imposed upon the state an immediate duty of implementation, the International Covenant of Economic, Social, and Cultural Rights imposes a duty the st uh, upon the states to take steps to the maximum of their available resources. So if affordable housing is declared as a full constitutional right, as it makes budgetary demands in its enforcement by the ju judiciary, as I stated, is not a simple matter. Now, of course, judges don't have to tussle with the government over allocations and can fry properly educative standards for enforcing the right to housing. Now, the best standard, and I believe that, it's a, the best, at least an important mechanism for protecting housing rights is the principle of equality, which obligates the state to treat every person equally regardless of religion, ethnicity, gender, personal status, age, sexual orientation, etc. And it includes social rights, equality in housing, meaning discrimination, discriminatory allotment of resources for affordable housing is not constitutional. That's very simple. It's a sort of civil right, even. It's not a, a question of social rights. It's a question of allotment, a discriminatory allotment. Now, coming back to Israel. Now, as I told you, <coughs> housing is not included in any basic law, which in Israel is an alternative to a constitution. Moreover, under regular legislation, the right to housing is also unsubstantial compared to other social rights that are protected by specific laws. Let us say, as an example, we have a compulsory education law, we have a national health insurance law, but there are a few laws that guarantee different aspects of the right to housing, and the most basic safety nets, such as eligibility for public housing, are secured only by regulations of the Ministry of Housing. We have no law, regular law, that obligates the government to allot the budgets necessary for housing. 
even so, the Supreme Court held <coughs> that the constitutional right to dignity, which is protected, as I said, by the basic law, human li li dignity and liberty, protect the right to live in dignity. Therefore, a person who has no accommodation, live in streets, is a person whose dignity has been violated. That's the sort of interpretation that the court gave. In other words, the court recognized the right of, of housing as a constitutional right, by def but defined it narrowly as having a roof over one's head. The court stated that the right to human dignity includes also a right to a minimum level of living. The court asserted that it's the state duty to provide a safety net, which ensures that everyone will have a place of residence, a shelter, where he could realize his privacy and be protected from the weather. Now, I believe that the right of housing is a part and parcel of the dignity of a human being, and it deserves a broader definition as stated in international law. But even this narrow definition is not uh, enforced, or is difficult to enforce it. Now, obviously, and we must all agree, that the court cannot alone provide the right to housing. It's the duty of the government and the parliament, our Knesset, to provide affordable housing in every neighborhood. <coughs> but I believe that the judiciary can and must be active promoting housing rights, by, and it can rely on the right to equality that is considered to be encompassed in the, in the constitutional right to human dignity. That's sure, because discrimination against a group is directly impringes on the right of dim dignity. So, that the court has, by our basic law, <coughs> human dignity and liberty, the power to invalidate discriminatory designation of affordable housing. Now, when it comes to discrimination, the policy of restraint, because there is a policy of restraints adopted by the court, in enforcing social rights even of the minimum level, as I stated, because when these rights clash with legislation enacted by the implementation of government policy, sure enough that the court is restrained. But when we speak on discrimination, so this restraint based on the role of parliament on budgetary allowances is not relevant. It's a question of discrimination. It's not a question of, of of budgetary means, because the, the parliament or the government has the budgetary means, but it cannot discriminate against different segments of the society. That's, that's the whole question. Now, and here I come to the end of my expose. Now, in relying on the principle of equality, the court can and I think must promote equal access to housing without discrimination. <coughs> and in, that is sure enough, including all segments of society. And here we speak about the uh, Arab community in Israel who suffer from discrimination. Uh, the Bedouin, the Lord, Arab villages, and so on and so forth. I think that's the, uh, the equality principle is a very good tool that enables to the co court to intervene in this matter. Thank you.